Good afternoon. Welcome to the October 12th policy session of the Phoenix City Council. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'll call the meeting to order and ask that the clerk call the roll. Councilwoman Ansari. Here. Councilman DeCicio. Councilwoman Guardado. Here. Councilwoman O'Brien. Here. Councilwoman Pastor. I apologize. Councilwoman Pastor. Here. Thank you. Councilwoman Stark. Here. Councilman Waring. Here. Vice Mayor Garcia. Here. Mayor Gallego. Thank you all for joining us today. We'll begin with a moment of silence. I'm going to turn to Vice Mayor Garcia to make some comments. And then before we begin the moment of silence, I will also make some additional comments. Vice Mayor. Unmute. Can't hear. Can't hear you. Sorry about that. Um, I want to take a moment to honor the life of two great Phoenicians who we lost recently. First, uh, Hans Hughes. Hans was a downtown Phoenix ambassador and beloved member of the Garfield neighborhood. Uh, he was a fixture of our downtown community and a kind soul who greeted everyone in Phoenix with a smile. He is dearly missed by his family and by our Phoenix team. His passing on September 21st has inspired many to take action, whether it is to be kinder to one another or to petition the city for protected bike lanes. Our team hopes to honor his legacy by working hard to make sure that cyclists and pedestrians are safe on our streets. Um, there's a picture of, of Hans, um, who you know many of us ran into downtown, He's also active in gardening and in the Garfield neighborhood, and he will be missed. Um, next, I also wanted to uh, take a moment to honor a dear friend, Nick Osa. Uh, he spent his life documenting the stories of our social justice movement here in Arizona um, and many other work in Arizona as he was a, a, a photographer for the Arizona Republic. He was also gentle, thoughtful, and full of energy. Um, I'm going to miss him dearly, uh, and I know that his memory will live on through through his kindness he showed, through everyone, through his amazing photography um, and the work he did. Um, I know, Mayor, you wanted to make some comments as well, but really wanted to honor uh, Hans and Nick today as, as two people that are have been crucial and, and brought a lot to downtown Phoenix and the social justice movement of Arizona. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. Uh, huge losses. It has been a year of huge losses, and this feels like a particularly difficult period since we last met. Our city employee family has experienced loss yet again, and the Arizona law enforcement community has experienced loss again, as well as so many families. So would urge everyone to please stay safe out there and would ask that all join the council in a moment of silence. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's hard to find the right way to honor folks we have lost. We'll now go to council information and follow up requests, beginning with Councilwoman Stark. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I want to thank Vice Mayor Garcia's request for a moment of silence for Hans. You now, the amount of pedestrian and vehicular fatalities is tragic in our city. For example, on October 2nd, we received five messages from our commander, Osborne, on fatal traffic accidents. Next Wednesday, we'll, we will be receiving an update on the Comprehensive Roadway Safety Plan at my subcommittee. I would like to suggest that we discuss Vision Zero as a part of that and how we incorporate it into our safety plan. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Councilwoman Guardado. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. 
Um, the city the city continues to offer COVID-19 testing and, vac and vaccines using our two mobile vans. The vans change location every day to better serve the most impacted communities. This Friday, October 15th, the mobile van will be doing COVID testing at the Fry's Food Store at 67th Avenue in Indian School from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. Next Saturday, October 23rd, District 5 will see a lot of exciting activity. North Glen Square Neighborhood Association will be hosting their game event starting at 8 a.m. with a community cleanup of 32nd Avenue and Myrtle. The Washington Park Neighborhood Association will be hosting their game event at 1, at 1 p.m. with a family picnic at Washington Park. Our Parks and Recreation Department will be hosting the second annual Maryville drive through Boo from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the American Fields of Phoenix. So a lot of our children will get um, two rounds of trick-or-treating. Um, and this is uh, 51st Avenue. And I want to do a special shout out and thanks to our Phoenix Fire Department for coordinating COVID testing and vaccines at this event. And also thanking um, the brewers as well for their dedication to our community, um, all the great events that have already happened and the great event that's about to happen next week and then stuff that we're looking into um, as we're headed into um, our Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, we hope to see folks out again and again. Please remember to search phoenix.gov COVID testing for all the locations of our mobile COVID vans. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Ansari, and then we'll go to Councilwoman Pastor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we stayed very busy last month in District 7. I um, just want to highlight a few of the things um, that we've been up to. First, during Drive Electric Week, which is a week to showcase and promote the benefits of driving electric, um, it was fun to join Mayor Gallego and um, check out the Cruise facility, which is one of the many uh, EV companies that are in the Valley, which is now called Electric Valley. So um, that was really cool. Second, I had a great time uh, tour touring the Target Distribution Center right here in Phoenix and checked out firsthand how products are organized and shipped out. One of the things that I was especially um, encouraged to see and hear about was that Target is actually providing direct tuition assistance for their employees, um, which has been very helpful in their retention efforts. And this is exactly the kind of good business we should strive to promote in Phoenix. And I would really love to see a Target City downtown, so we'll continue to work on that. Third, um, we also hosted a roundtable with some stakeholders and community members in Maryville, where we discussed ways we can connect neighbors with city resources, tackle blight, and make our streets safer. So I look forward um, to hopefully collaborating with uh, my fellow councilwomen who represent the Maryville area um, to, to organize around these issues. Fourth, uh, we had a great turnout at our community cleanup in Levine. My team and I joined and had um, a really, really good time uh, cleaning up the area. And I want to give a special thanks to Neighborhood Services for coordinating the tool truck for this project. Finally, um, another piece of good business news on Grand Avenue. We saw three new women-owned, Black-owned businesses um, that opened a couple weekends ago. There's Ice Stuff, which is an ice cream shop. My Posh Affairs and Nail Salon and Bombshell and Mo, which is a very cool uh, boutique uh, where the owner makes uh, handmade candles. So really huge congratulations to these three new businesses. I look forward to supporting you and I hope everyone will go check them out. Coming up this month, vaccines continue to be a huge priority. They are saving lives and helping us get out of this pandemic. Um, my office is hosting another vaccination event this Saturday at the Jack L. Cuban Elementary School from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. All three vaccines will be offered as well as booster shots for those who are eligible. So please do sign up at onecommunityaz.com or you can check out um, our office's social media for more information. And then last but definitely not least, uh, we're teaming up with Mercy Care 1 in 10 and Phoenix Pride, um, as well as the Foundry Phoenix and Fez to host Pride on the Block. Um, it will be on Sunday, October 24th from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, it's right ahead of the 40th anniversary of Phoenix Pride. I'm really excited for it. We're gonna have music, performers, food and drink specials, and the first 100 attendees will receive a commemorative tree shirt. Um, it is free to the public, but please do RSVP so we have a sense of how many people are coming and, 
everyone is welcome. So hope to see you on October 24th. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Pastor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, today we celebrated the third anniversary of our first responders cancer screening program. You may move the slide. <laughs> we have screened 2000 first responders and we have caught 75 cancers in the early stages. Today we added a new blood test that can detect 50 cancers in their earliest stages. I'm proud to say Phoenix is a leader in the nation for cancer prevention. Early detection saves lives. We have Breakfast of the Champions. On September 25th, my office hosted our first annual Breakfast of the Champions to thank and honor our community leaders and block watch leaders. It was a great success and I look forward to doing this every year. Sit, stay, heal as I talk about this. This is Lolly. Lolly's mom, Crystal, just got back on her feet and took Lolly home on their new apartment. Crystal said it was such a blessing to have a safe place for Lolly. It was her number one reason for not getting into a program or getting assistance before. We know Lolly and Crystal have a great future ahead of them. Look at that smile, Lolly. Once again, District 4, my Twitter, email, and phone number. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman O'Brien. Thank you, Mayor. This last weekend was a tough weekend for all of us, especially for our public safety community. My heart breaks for the family of Maricopa County Deputy Juan Miguel Ruiz, who was killed this weekend by a truly evil man. My condolences also go out to the families of DEA Special Agent Michael Garbo, who was killed after a routine inspection for contraband of a passenger train in Tucson. And I've also just learned of the passing of Sergeant Michael Rudd of the La Paz County Sheriff's Office, who was struck and killed by a driver during a fatal traffic investigation. I agree with Democrat Maricopa County Sheriff Paul Penzone. There will always be truly evil people and criminals on our streets and in our communities. Without the support from our city staff and elected officials, our officer numbers will continue to drop. And as a result, our communities become more and more unsafe. Now, more than ever, we need to support our public safety first responders. Tomorrow, I will be participating in the police department civilian training course so that I might better understand the day-to-day -day responsibilities that comes with a wearing a badge. I encourage my fellow council members who have not yet gone through this experience to join me. By walking a mile in each other's shoes, only then can we begin to understand each other better. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Any additional council member comments? I want to echo what my colleagues have said, ranging from uh, recognizing lost to the importance of vaccination. Thank you to Councilwoman Stark and the Transportation Infrastructure and Planning Subcommittee for their important work on pedestrian safety. Uh, we had a great kickoff to the Comprehensive Roadway Safety Action Plan and looking forward to the next uh, stage moving forward in that as well on Friday. Um, and we'll be hearing from about these issues uh, for quite a while as the city continues to move forward. I'd like to congratulate new assistant city manager, Lori Bays. Congratulations. We are so pleased to have you as our assistant city manager. Lori has served 25 years in the public and private sector, including most recently as our human resources director here at the city of Phoenix. And our very own Phoenix Mercury have made it to the WNBA finals. After defeating Las Vegas, the Mercury are in a best of five series against the Chicago Sky. So be sure to turn in to game two and support the Mercury at 6 p.m. on Wednesday. This is the fifth time the team is taking part in the series. They have already won an astounding three times. I know that the Mercury has experience and the star power to clinch another title for our city. And both as mayor and a Phoenician, I want to say good luck. I'm confident that the Mercury will bring home another championship and so confident that I have a wager with Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot, which includes a variety of goods from women owned businesses, including um, in the unlikely event that that uh, the Mercury do not take it home. This is a uh, nameplate from two women owned businesses 
Latham Electronics and Spirit Electronics, women owned business doing advanced manufacturing, and they would make Mayor Lightfoot uh, her very own nameplate again in the unlikely uh, option that the, the Mercury do not bring it home. Um, also wanted to let people know that for Momentum 2050, the regional transportation plan, today is the final day to provide comments. And then if you're looking for something fun to do this weekend, I would encourage you to check out Canstruction at the Arizona Center where amazing design teams have built canned goods into beautiful, impressive sculptures. The food will benefit St. Mary's Food Bank and is a neat ex exhibition for anyone who appreciates construction and creativity. Uh, with that, we will move forward to the meat of our council agenda. We do not today have a call for an executive session. Uh, we first reserve a time at the beginning of the council meeting for budget reports and updates by our city manager. So uh, our new city manager, Jeff Barton, is with us. Jeff, do you have any updates today? Mayor, the only update I would Mayor. give is that today marks the kickoff of our three plus nine process. So all of our budget and fiscal staff across the city are now busy getting into starting to craft next year's base budget, which we'll bring back to council later in the fall. So I would just like to wish them happy three plus nine. Well said. We next move to item agenda number one, Office of Heat Response and Mitigation Overview and Discussion, an incredibly important effort, particularly as we come through yet another uh, difficult summer. I will turn it over to Karen Peters, Deputy City Manager, to introduce the item. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good afternoon, Mayor and Council. I'm pleased to be with you today to discuss heat readiness in Phoenix and our new Office of Heat Response and Mitigation. With me to present are David, our Dr. David Hondula, whom I will introduce more fully a little later, and Anna Bettis, Healthy Cities Program Manager with the Nature Conservancy in Arizona. Just last week, the world's leading scientific publication, Nature, published an article with this headline. The article called for cities to significantly step up their efforts to address challenges associated with extreme heat and recommended a number of particular strategies. As you know, Phoenix is often ahead of the curve in pursuing cooling strategies and programs to keep residents and visitors safe. And today I will share an update on our continuing efforts to do so. One of the key recommendations from this article was for cities to create new positions and accountability structures for heat management. Thanks to your vision, we were months ahead of that recommendation in the draft budget from this past spring that was ultimately approved in July. As you know, our most recent budget included a $2.8 million climate and heat readiness investment, which included resources to support 14 new positions spread across three departments, as well as support for critical infrastructure like trees and irrigation lines, and information and data resources, including updates to our city's tree inventory. The majority of that funding, 1.5 million, is allocated to support the Street Transportation Department Cool Corridors Program, with additional funds to the Parks Department, including five new positions for tree planting and maintenance, and updates to our tree inventory, and to the Office of Environmental Programs to conduct greenhouse gas and air quality work. The Fire Department also added five positions to support the Solar Energy Inspection Program. Climate and heat readiness investment was one of the most popular and broadly supported items in the budget during the public engagement process. An important component of that investment is our new Office of Heat Response and Mitigation, which is the first publicly funded municipal government office focusing on heat anywhere in the world. The office's budget includes support for four positions, which you can see outlined on the slide here. I will introduce you to our new director momentarily, but first, to provide some context for discussion around priorities for our new heat office, I would like to describe our work on urban heat and provide a few recent highlights from our programs. 
When leading local, national, and international organizations are looking to learn how cities are tackling urban heat or partner with municipal governments to pursue new solutions, they find that Phoenix is often at the center of that work. Our city and many collaborators whose work is centered in Phoenix have been developing a globally recognized portfolio of critical programs and services related to urban heat for many decades. Some of the collaborators we work with and organizations that support our work are shown here. Many city departments have incubated exemplary programs with leadership on heat coming from our sustainability office, volunteer programs, and the human services, street transportation, planning and development, and public transit departments, just to name a few. To share a few specific and recent highlights with you, our sustainability office led the city's efforts to create a first-of-its-kind partnership with the nation's oldest national nonprofit conservation organization to equitably increase our tree canopy. Mayor and Council unanimously supported a memorandum of understanding with American Forests that has already attracted even more partnerships and support to plant trees in places in our city where they're urgently needed. Our sustainability office also helped us learn about a cool pavement pilot project that was happening several years ago in Los Angeles. Our street transportation department was inspired and motivated by their work to conduct our own even bigger and better version. Today, no city in North America has more miles of cool pavement on city streets than Phoenix. And thanks to our research partnership with ASU, we are learning exactly how much cooler we can make our streets and how much longer pavement can last when it is covered with this reflective coating. We've also been working hard to connect people to critical heat relief services when it's hot. Our We're Cool program operates each summer to distribute informational resources that help community members access cooling centers and water distribution sites. Incorporating volunteers from the city's community emergency response team program. This effort is featured in the internationally recognized Heat Wave Guide for Cities, authored by the Red Cross. We have much more work to do, however, to achieve our vision of a city that is comprehensively heat ready. As you have heard many times, temperatures have been consistently rising here in Phoenix, and projections are for longer and warmer summers in the decades ahead. Our record-setting summer of 2020 offered a glimpse into what scientists anticipate will become the new normal over the next several decades. To take our office, to take our city's efforts to the next level, we need a more coordinated and aggressive response. Our new Office of Heat Response and Mitigation represents our commitment to do so. And I'm now pleased to introduce David Hondula, who will be leading the office. David has been one of our key collaborators as a faculty member at Arizona State University and is well positioned to help guide our work moving forward. He's pictured here at a Heat Ready Phoenix event we did in the Edison East Lake neighborhood in 2018. David? Thank you, Deputy City Manager Peters, and good afternoon, Mayor and Council. It's an honor to be here with you to help introduce our new and the nation's first publicly funded Office of Heat Response and Mitigation. Mayor and Council, when you first introduced the concept of this office to the public as part of the trial budget in March, I shared the idea in a virtual seminar for undergraduate students in environmental sciences at my alma mater, Virginia. Like you, I was eager to showcase this exciting and innovative development as part of a broader point about how cities are evolving their approaches to tackle heat and other challenges. My enthusiasm was quickly dampened, however, when one student cleverly chimed in. I'm not sure who would want that job. It sure seems like they would take a lot of heat. I fully anticipate that the student was correct, and I have no reservations that holding accountability for heat management in city government will be easy. In fact, the difficulty and challenge speaks to the importance. As the city's budget commitment acknowledges, and as we hear from the community time and time again, we have work to do. Hard work. I have a deep appreciation and respect for the challenges we face and the fact that we need to do more, better, and faster. 
My intimate familiarity with the narratives and data that tell our urban heat story meant that I could not overlook the call to public service that this position and office reflects. Heat-related deaths, for example, which many in our community see as the best indicator for success in managing heat, are moving in the wrong direction, rapidly. And Phoenix has the highest rate of those heat-related deaths in our county. Closely coupled to our health challenges are those concerning heat equity. Every city in the country is or should be re-examining how people in different neighborhoods experience environmental hazards like heat. Perhaps better than anywhere else, we have a clear understanding of the inequitable burden of heat and distribution of cooling resources in Phoenix. Those differences not only result in tangible, consequential impacts for the people who live and work in our hottest neighborhoods, but also hold back our entire city and region from maximizing their potential. I think we can do better, Mayor and Council, and believe that you do as well. I was compelled to apply for and undertake this challenge because of your leadership and foresight to invest in this office. Equally motivating was the portfolio of cutting-edge programs and services that the Deputy City Manager described. And our work here in the city sits in a constellation of amazing, creative people and organizations in our region that genuinely care about this problem. We will hear from one of them shortly. Strong partnerships across our region are a prerequisite for the success of this office, and I am comforted knowing that we already have many and can continue to develop many more. Let's talk about the plans for the new office. As you're likely aware, we are just getting up and running. This is my seventh day as a city employee. We are in front of you today to receive your direction and guidance as we get to work. Our office will of course be guided by the heat goals articulated in the Climate Action Plan that will be discussed later this afternoon. There are eight components of our initial vision for how the office will operate in pursuit of those and other goals. We will have a dual and equal focus on heat response, helping people cope with heat, and heat mitigation, strategies to cool the city and make it more comfortable. We will be capturing information that helps us assess and communicate the return on investments for heat response and mitigation, with particular attention to the very costly health impacts associated with heat illness that we will be working to avoid. We are going to be creative, intentional, and science-based in the metrics we use to describe heat challenges and successes in our city, paying particular attention to spatial patterns in the data. We are going to work with partners to be innovative and experiment with more projects like the cool pavement pilot that we heard about earlier. We should carefully balance how we spend public resources testing unproven solutions with our urgent need and challenge to find and deliver new ones. We are going to ensure that there is a shared regional dialogue about managing heat and facilitate efforts to do so. We will also participate as best as possible with national and international institutions focused on urban heat, not only to showcase our own work, but also to bring new ideas and hopefully new resources to our residents. But these last two points will be our anchors. Over the past few years, my colleagues and I have spent a lot of time in the community working with partners to understand and document people's experiences and what they want to see improve. Much of that work was embedded in the Vitalist funded Nature's Cooling Systems project that we will hear about shortly. The heat action plan and guide that that project produced will very much be a navigational beacon for our office, both with respect to specific community needs here in Phoenix, as well as for principles and practices for listening to and learning from our community. I am very well aware that we have decades of reports, surveys, social media comments, plans, and other mechanisms of public input that already provide an inventory of what our community members want and where and how they want it. Our office will work to be responsive to that past dialogue while ensuring that we have a dynamic and active conversation with neighbors and community groups moving forward. And to help bring to light some specific examples of what productive and meaningful community engagement on urban heat looks like, I'm now very pleased to introduce my colleague Anna Bettis from the Nature Conservancy. Anna, while we've worked together for many years from my position at ASU, I'm certainly excited to think about how we will be able to further amplify and extend your program's great work through this new office. Anna. Thank you, Dave. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Anna Bettis. I'm the Healthy Cities Program Manager for the Nature Conservancy in Arizona. Thank you so much for the opportunity to come here and speak today. I want to start just by saying that I'm enthusiastic to continue to collaborate with 
uh, Dave, who I've been, had the great fortune to work with in my role at the Nature Conservancy. Um, he's been a great partner in his capacity at ASU. Um, we've also worked very closely with uh, the city of Phoenix. I'll provide a couple of ex examples of that here in a moment. Um, but to just start, if you're not familiar with the Nature Conservancy, I'll just share quickly a little bit about who we are. We're the largest conservation organization in the world, working in all 50 states and 72 countries. Um, historically, our work has focused um, primarily on um, fo uh, conserving ecologically significant places. Uh, and a couple of years ago, we really took a step back and said, you know what, if we want to make a big impact on the environmental challenges we're facing, we're going to have to look at cities and how can we bring nature into cities to help solve some of those big challenges. So for Phoenix, being the hottest large metro area in the country, heat is certainly a big focus for us and that, that is our big focus for the, the Healthy Cities program. Um, a little bit about the, the city's program. Um, we did establish a goal. Um, our goal is by 2030 to achieve at least a 15% tree canopy cover in all underserved communities in the 10 large cities in Maricopa County to reduce heat for people, nature, and the economy. And this is a lofty goal that we cannot uh, get to alone. So all of our work is done through partnerships. Um, we also uh, have strategies to, we, where we have these strategies to get there. Uh, the first one is to uh, promote the use of nature-based solutions as a heat mitigation strategy. Uh, the second is strengthening the capacity of community residents so they can advocate for greener, healthier, and cooler neighborhoods. And the last is developing the science and tools to help inform policies to guide investments for heat mitigation. And I'll share a couple of examples of some of those. One that Dave mentioned to you already um, and that is the um, Nature's Cooling Systems Partnership. And through that work, we developed the Heat Action Planning Guide for Neighborhoods of Greater Phoenix. Um, that, in that effort, we identified three neighborhoods along with partners like uh, Maricopa County Department of Public Health, ASU, Dave was our, one of our main partners there, um, that were disproportionately impacted by urban heat. And we brought together neighborhoods, uh, people who lived in those neighborhoods, to hear about the hot spots that they had experienced difficulty with heat while moving through their communities. Um, we always talk about the importance of residents as experts in their experience of heat and the importance of also engaging them in any, any of those solutions. And so through that effort, we developed three plans for those neighborhoods. The two were in Phoenix, one was in Mesa. And for our work, that's been a really important tool to guide our investments. So for example, if we are able to uh, secure resources to do a community greening project, we always refer back to those plans to say, you know, where did residents actually say that they experienced difficulty with heat in their neighborhood that they would like to see cooling solutions? Um, and the last example that I'll share um, is the, the Virtual Urban Heat Leadership Academy that's currently underway. That kicked off in July and is gonna conclude in November. Our core partner for that program is Phoenix Revitalization Corporation. They're a community-based organization um, that has really worked with us on the recruitment for that program and also making sure that the content in there is um, culturally appropriate, that it's accessible to anyone, whether or not they have a background in this topic. The goal is really to equip community residents in Phoenix with the knowledge, resources, and skills to um, mobilize their communities and advocate for cooler, greener, and healthier neighborhoods. It's open across Maricopa County, but we certainly have uh, really the most participation from residents in Phoenix. Uh, that, that program um, also includes a, a lot of the, these partners up here. Uh, we worked with Dave on the, the heat lesson. Uh, we also worked with the city of Phoenix closely to actually kick off the program. We brought in Mark Hartman to really give an overview of what are the big uh, sustainability challenges in our region, what are uh, the things that the city of Phoenix is doing to address those, how can residents really get involved. Um, and our idea here is not really not just to train residents, because um, you know training is good, education is good, but the idea is to really develop a, a cohort and a, a group of community leaders that are really advocating for solutions to heat. Um, and that actually, that is my last slide. I just want to reiterate, reiterate my enthusiasm to, for working with this office. There is a, a large group of stakeholders who are eager and excited to collaborate with Dave and this new office and really a readiness to work on these issues. So um, commend the city of Phoenix for, for establishing that. Thanks. Uh, thanks so much, Anna, for your remarks and well wishes. To wrap up, Mayor and Council, I'd like to briefly highlight the work that our office is already undertaking just seven days in. 
Although we're enjoying the early signs of fall and cooler weather today, the heat office has important work to do year round. The tree planting season is immediately upon us and realistically there are only six months to go to ensure that all of our heat response programs and services are ready to go for the next warm season. Our current efforts include meeting with mayor and members of council as well as department heads and other key stakeholders to review priorities. We are connecting the office to the community first through a series of media engagements and subsequently visiting important commission and board meetings. We are staffing the office. We're very fortunate to have already onboarded a talented administrative assistant, Michelle Litwin, who brings several years of experience working with relevant city programs. Our next hire will be the tree and shade administrator that the community has expressed a lot of support for over the past several years. We are working with streets and sustainability to support the cool corridor selection and planning process. We're identifying relevant external funding opportunities and we think that there's tremendous opportunity at this particular moment with what we've heard from the federal administration and their priorities concerning heat. And finally, to acknowledge some other great work happening in the city from a heat perspective that we will support, the photo shown on this slide is a screenshot from the cover of a new educational booklet about heat for the community called Let's Talk Heat that the Office of Arts and Culture has developed in partnership with ASU. We'll be sharing more about that material and other exciting heat-focused initiatives from their office in the months ahead. With that, thank you again for welcoming me and our office and your commitment to this important topic. We very much look forward to your guidance and direction and are happy to answer any questions. Wonderful. Thank you both, uh, all three of you, for the excellent presentation. We do have two members of the public to address the council on this item. We'll begin with Mark Rodriguez, followed by Ginger Torres. Hello, Mayor Kay Canedo. What up, Mayor KG and everybody at the PHXCC City Council? It's good to hear from all of you guys again. I was wondering that you guys all talking about all these stuff and all this information about all that heat and all that stuff, even though I lived here in Phoenix for like almost 30 years since I was born here in November 26, 1991, it's because I want to say happy early birthday to Mayor Kate Gallego because I send you a birthday card on Thursday. I hope you get it, and I hope you have a great time on your birthday next week because your birthday is on November 21st. And also a shout-out to Yasmin Astari, Betty Wagato, Laura Pastor, Deborah Stark, Ann O'Brien, Carlos Garcia, Jim Waring, Sal DeCicio, and, of course, you, Mayor Kate Gallego, because I know you're my favorite because... It's kind of fun to talk to you guys and all that stuff. Even though my birthday is coming up on November 26, 1991, I mean, November 26th of Friday, it's because it's my birthday and because my birthday will come up next month because I'm so sorry, guys. It's because I like all talking to you guys and all that. And Mayor KG, I hope you get your card because I send it to you because, and I hope everything in this community will cool off this fall and winter because with the Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's and all that stuff, it's because I always like those holidays because I always like to have a cool weather because I'm sick and tired of the hot heat during the summer and all that stuff. It's because I always been having talks to you guys and all that stuff. And Mayor Gallego, I wanted to say happy early birthday, have a wonderful time, and have a great day, City Council. Farewell. Thank you for your perspective on our heat office. Ginger Sykes Torres is our final comment on item one. Thank you, Mayor and Council members and Deputy City Manager Peters. I'm the chair of the City of Phoenix Subcommittee on Urban Heat Island and Trees and Shade, known simply as UHITS. Dr. Handula and Ms. Betis have been members of the subcommittee, and I'm so very grateful for their contributions to our subcommittee's work. As we know, rising heat is being recognized as a threat to communities nationwide. Our UHIT subcommittee has been actively engaged in proposing innovative recommendations for addressing this issue, including advocating for a tree and shade administ administrator, so thank you for that and sending via EQSC a citywide cool corridors recommendations that hope to provide a blueprint for creating a network of cool corridors throughout the city, both on arterial streets, but also on neighborhoods, canals, and in other spaces where pedestrians need them the most. In the next few months, we hope to bring forward recommendations on cool roofs and a citywide heat equity policy. Um, 
but overall, with regard to the upcoming um, consideration for cool corridors with the, the transportation department, one of the major recommendations from the UHIT subcommittee has been to really have public in, input into that process and let public um, commun and communities be engaged in locating where those corridors should be within their site specific communities to address the needs of these particular locations that they are, they are being proposed in. So I really wanna strongly encourage the council to reach out to communities um, when choosing those first level of cool corridors um, and listen to those community voices directly. I am proud overall that our city is making investments in addressing the urban heat island and public health effects of rising heat in our city. As we know, the Southwest is a model of what it will what will hit the rest of the nation later when it comes to, to the dangers of heat associated with global warming. And with partners in our community and research institutions and living with heat, Phoenix is so well positioned to be a model for other cities who will be grappling with public health, the public health challenge of rising heat. Um, I look forward to continuing to work with the new Office of Heat Response and Miti Mitigation, and I wholeheartedly congratulate Dr. Hondula and his new role. And thank you, Mayor and Council members for the time. Wonderful, thank you. That concludes our public testimony on agenda item one, which is the Office of Heat Response and Mitigation. I wanna thank our staff and community partners who have been working on heat for more than a decade. Many of the recommendations that are moving forward today came with input from our community partners, including the Environmental Quality and Sustainability Commission and its subcommittee and our staff has just been innovating and, and leading the way for years and years. Uh, this summer we heard from several cities in the Northwest who wanted to know what we were doing on heat and, and how they might have tried and true solutions to address some of the heat challenges that they were facing. I am excited to have the first publicly funded Office of Heat Response and Mitigation in the United States and I know it will continue to lead the way. I hope it'll help us bring together departments across the city to do innovative solutions across boundaries. I'm glad that we'll be able to do that two-pronged approach and simultaneously address those who are most vulnerable, as well as implement solutions to mitigate heat and produce a more comfortable city. Welcome Dr. Hondala and thank you to all of our partners. We'll go uh, to council members now, starting with Councilwoman Ansari, followed by Councilwoman Stark, and then the vice mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first off, welcome Dr. Hanjula to the team. Um, I'm especially excited for this office and this position and so excited to work with you. As the mayor said, the fact that this is the first publicly funded office of its kind is a, is a really big deal. So it really shows that we're taking the public health crisis that we face with heat extremely seriously. Um, I very much appreciate the early conversations um, that you've already made the effort to have with our offices. And um, as I've mentioned to you, I really hope that the fact that we know heat isn't distributed equally and the fact that, you know, underserved communities in District 7, 8, 4, 5, um, you know, face the brunt of this. I'm, I'm grateful that you were very open to working on equity issues. Um, and also very much looking forward to making sure that we have a proactive plan when it comes to addressing heat related deaths, um, especially for our neighbors experiencing homelessness. I want to um, make sure that we're starting early, that we have a plan that's sustainable and proactive and that we're not being reactive. So welcome to the team. Honestly, just very grateful for for having you on board and the fact that you've already made some hires is fantastic. So congratulations again. We'll go to Councilwoman Stark, followed by the Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. And I, too, am very excited about this office. And it's great meeting you, David. I know you're going to do wonderful things for us. I really appreciate it. Um, I did have a quick question on the cool corridors. And I like the idea of getting communities involved in it. But I thought there was certain criteria necessary to be the ideal candidate for a cool corridor. Maybe Keeney needs to answer the question, but I want to make sure that we, I, I love the idea of having community input, but I want to make sure that we, we're not getting people excited about areas that we may not be able to apply the cool corridor Thank you, materials. Yeah, so Sorry. I see. Yeah. Keeney is here, so we'll turn okay. to him. 
<laughs> so I'm walking down. <laughs> Thanks, Councilwoman Stark. Mayor, members of Council, Councilwoman Stark. Uh, with respect to the cool corridors, um, and I know we've uh, been providing briefings to each of the mayor's office and the council members, uh, with the approval of the cool quarters program for this budget series, um, season, um, we know this is gonna be an annual program. We wanted to make sure we had um, plenty of time to be able to get those cool quarter locations installed um, in each of the council districts this fiscal year. So uh, although we know we, um, that we've heard um, public input about wanting to have more public um, uh, input as part of the process, uh, we anticipate that happening since this is an annual program with future years. Uh, we are concerned about um, making sure that we have the time to be able to get those cool quarters installed this fiscal year. I think we've been keeping okay. uh, the council members updated on that. Uh, we've heard that um, feedback, and we want to make sure um, this is an iterative process that we will conclude the, the public um, engagement and public feedback process with future years of cool quarter installation. Okay, thank you. I just want to make sure we meet the criteria and we do it in a timely fashion, so I appreciate that. And I am really excited about trying to increase the coverage of trees. As a matter of fact, this weekend, the mayor and I planted or helped plant uh, six, six trees in Sunny Slope. So very exciting. And I certainly support getting us increased coverage when it comes to shade. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Councilman Stark, I forgot, I, I neglected to answer your initial question, which was about the criteria. Yes, we do have criteria we're looking at, which includes looking at areas um, of the city that are hotter um, because of lack of tree and shade coverage, among other areas that we are using a criteria. So we have established criteria that we're working off of. It's just the public engagement piece that might be uh, uh, something that will happen in future years, and, and uh, we're okay. working, trying to get this implemented as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, welcome, David. Welcome to the office. Really excited for this, like my colleagues are. Um, the creation of this office is something we should all be proud of as a city, um, but it's important, and I think, David, you acknowledge that, that we are uh, that we are behind in some, in some things, um, especially in extreme heat and its deadly consequences, especially on our constituents living unhoused. Um, this already has been a public crisis for a long time, and it's unfortunately rapidly worsening. Um, I hope my colleagues and I can hold this urgency and do our part to ensure that this office has resources that it needs to act immediately. Um, it is great to see clear set of priorities as this office gets started, but I think it's also important that the office reports back to us once these priorities have more tangible goals or projects that, that we can be more helpful with. Um, the last thing I want to say is I'm, I'm very happy, and I think some of my colleagues have also stated this, to see this, the office acknowledging that the urban heat does not affect all people equally. Um, I would like the office to consider implementing an equity lens to set its priorities and to ensure that all uh, strategies and efforts keep this in mind um, at every step of the way and, and continuing um, the process that, you know, that has started already in, in having community engagement and engagement with all the offices. So no questions, just really excited for the office. Welcome and uh, looking forward to continuing to support this work. Any additional council member comments? Wonderful, that includes agenda item number one. Karen Peters, Deputy City Manager, will introduce our next ad item, number two, the Phoenix Climate Action Plan, bringing forward after so much work. A very exciting day for our city. Karen. Okay, as our, as our team um, gets in position, <laughs> Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mayor and Council. Thank you for the opportunity to introduce the city's 2021 Climate Action Plan. So with me today to present are Nancy Allen, the city's Environmental Programs Administrator, along with Matthew Potzler and Roseanne Albright, also with the Office of Environmental Programs. I want to also acknowledge and thank the many city department staff who helped bring the Climate Action Plan to life. A number of them are here today to be available to answer any questions related to specific projects or programs. I cannot say enough about the hard work and collaboration that our team has done. It is amazing work, and the result is a clear, science-based plan that's also dynamic and flexible. 
So why do a climate action plan? Two months ago, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change released its most recent scientific findings regarding the current state of the Earth's climate. The report lays out the most updated, comprehensive evidence that widespread and rapid climate changes have occurred and are intensifying as a result of human activities that increased concentrations of greenhouse gas in the atmosphere, the oceans, and land. Around the world, governments, businesses, and other organizations are taking action, to, the action needed to halt and reduce the emissions causing these changes. And the city of Phoenix is leading the way. Phoenix voters supported an ambitious vision in the 2015 general plan to become the most sustainable desert city on the planet. And in 2016, the mayor and city council adopted ambitious 2050 environmental sustainability goals to set long-term outcomes to fulfill that vision. Because of these commitments, Phoenix was invited to join the C40 Cities Climate Leadership Group, a network of the world's major cities committed to climate action. With adoption of this climate action plan, the mayor and council will reaffirm and strengthen the city's commitment to become a carbon neutral city by 2050, as well as approve the goals and actions needed to achieve greenhouse gas reductions of at least 50% by 2030. C40's technical team has approved, excuse me, <laughs> has reviewed the proposed plan and confirmed that it meets their standards and is consistent with the goals of the Paris Agreement. In just over two weeks' time, at the United Nations Climate Change Conference of the Parties, C40 will highlight the Phoenix's and other cities' contributions to the worldwide effort. Phoenix's climate action plan is unique among the plans of other North American cities because it looks beyond simply reducing greenhouse gas emissions to focus also on resiliency, issues that our community is keenly aware of and concerned about, such as water resources and heat mitigation. In addition, the Phoenix plan is the first to be prepared entirely with in-house resources compared to others who hired consultants. As you will hear, the plan came together across virtually all city departments and was shaped by robust community involvement. So I will turn now to Nancy, who will describe that process. Nancy. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council Members. I'm going to present a short narrative description Okay, sorry. Uh, a short narrative description of the process that created the Climate Action Plan presented here today. In spring of 2020, we received the final 2018 City of Phoenix Greenhouse Gas Inventory. Phoenix has been conducting these inventories since the late 2010s. This inventory covered a period where the city experienced growth, both economic and in population, while having a per capita greenhouse gas reduction. During that same time, we asked city departments to volunteer at least one individual to act as a climate liaison. Climate liaisons communicated departmental goals, actions, as well as their programs and projects. This information resulted in a catalog of activities and actions that the city was doing that directly addressed climate. Together with that catalog of actions and data from our inventory, we produced a climate action framework. Once the framework was prepared, we conducted community outreach. The City of Phoenix departments assisted with and participated in our outreach, such as presenting at workshops, supplying content for surveys, and providing responses to department-specific questions. Feedback from this outreach effort went straight to the departments, who in turn provided responses back. All of that was integrated into an updated framework document, and that framework document formed the scaffolding that we built the Climate Action Plan around. In early 2021, the climate liaisons from our city departments began work on updating their goals and actions as well as adding new ones. The liaisons in their departments were working on goals and actions that produced real results. That was especially prominent when those actions were modeled. We used the Pathways Modeling Tool provided by C40 to assess how our existing and proposed actions will impact our GHG emissions. The Pathways Model allowed us to assess which goals and actions were the most impactful and rethink how our goals might be achieved. 
With our modeling in hand and our liaisons ready, we once again reached out to the public. Over the summer of 2021, we conducted workshops and surveys and did social media outreach. C40 was also reviewing our modeling effort and our plan at this time. This combined effort of using scientifically sound modeling and listening to and integrating community feedback produced a truly City of Phoenix document, our climate action plan presented here today. So in summary, over approximately a year and a half during a pandemic, we conducted a two-stage community engagement process by producing a climate action framework, ultimately becoming the City of Phoenix Climate Action Plan. We conducted community outreach three separate times as part of this process. Starting in spring of 2020, we asked the community for their input on the climate action. That helped us create the Climate Action Framework document. We then went back out to the community to get feedback on that framework. That helped us write the draft, the draft Climate Action Plan. And that brings us back to going back out to the community to ask for feedback on that. And so that happened summer with more community outreach and that produced the climate action plan you see here today. To dive deeper into the community outreach and to share some of the direct feedback from those efforts is Roseanne Albright. Roseanne? Thank you, Nancy. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. I'm really happy to talk to you about this aspect of the project. It really is my favorite. Even though I am a bit of a science geek and love that piece, it was really wonderful to hear from people in our community who shared their lived experiences as it relates to climate and really told us about their ideas on climate solutions that would be most impactful for them. We really thank them for their input over the past year and a half, and especially since we started this work in, at the height of the pandemic, at a time when people were concerned about their health, about their families, and their jobs. We needed to be creative and collaborative wherever we could to bring people to the conversation in a way that was easily accessible and encouraged participation, all in a virtual environment. The little square boxes became our friend, and they're still our friend. So how did we get all of this done? We conducted a total of 18 virtual events. We hosted primarily workshops with breakout sessions where people would be able to share their opinions and their input. The workshops were open to everyone. We also hosted webinars that provided an overview of the plan or covered a specific topic. For example, we presented webinars on water and heat and more than 500 people attended these workshops and webinars, and they were posted online and still remain available online for folks to be able to watch. Now, in order to cast an even wider net to gather input, we conducted four online surveys offered in English and Spanish. The first three were developed in-house with the help of our communications office, who we thank immensely for their work. We engaged the help of an outside consultant for the last survey conducted this past summer, which even allowed us to provide paper surveys at all of our Phoenix Public Libraries. In total, we received more than 3,500 responses. And of course, a robust social media campaign is necessary and was conducted throughout the year and a half. As a result, we had over 400,000 views on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and we also used tools such as Nextdoor and had an additional 50,000 views. And we didn't stop there. We also used our existing avenues such as our Phoenix at Your Service newsletter and grocery TV video ads that played this summer for another 440,000 impressions as well. So all of that outreach was possible with partnerships and collaboration from community organizations and businesses, and we want to acknowledge and thank partners such as Chiefs by Arizona, Arizona Youth Climate Coalition, Union of Concerned Scientists, and all of you, Council, for distributing that information to your networks, and to Council Districts 7 and 8, who collaborated with us to host two workshops. So now let's talk about what we heard throughout this engagement. So just to give you a few highlights, this is from Chispa, Arizona, Sierra Club, Sweep, or Southwest Energy Efficiency Project, and Vote Solar. They said, we applaud and appreciate the city for committing itself to following the Paris Climate Agreement and striving to achieve net zero carbon emissions by 2020. We also heard from Republic Services, who supports the city's efforts 
with climate work. And the Arizona Diamondbacks supported the plan, and in addition to recognizing the importance of combating climate change, they emphasize that it is smart business. And from SRP, they commented that we share a common vision for a low carbon future. We also heard directly from organizations like Valley Partnership who voice their opinions on actions that affect buildings and real estate. So now what did we hear directly from the public? One of the questions we asked was how often do you think about climate change? Those of us sitting here at the table think about it all the time. We were surprised, though, that people every day thought about climate change. 59% of them thought about it every day. 59%. So now I'll summarize for you what we heard in our outreach. These are the climate actions that are most supported. Composting at home. Electric vehicle charging and making streets where folks can walk and bike promoting buy local food campaign, reducing upfront costs for climate solutions, offering energy efficiency home upgrades, and at the top was making public transit more accessible and affordable and creating programs that improved air quality. These are the top actions that were identified by the public that were most urgent for the city to address. Planting trees in neighborhoods without trees, fostering a reliable water supply, again, reducing upfront costs for climate solutions, particularly solar panels, and offering no or low cost energy efficiency home upgrades. And lastly, as we heard from the community that addressing climate change and taking action, in their opinion, benefits the community as a whole with improved health of their families, increased renewable energy, an equitable community can result from this work. And in addition, climate action creates a thriving world for future generations and improves air and water quality. All of this input, along with all the information Nancy shared, resulted in a 200-page document that we presented in English and Spanish online at phoenix.gov. In one of the virtual workshops, a member of a local community-based nonprofit organization stated this about the plan, and I quote, the document itself was very easy reading. It was very clear and understandable, so I am very grateful that it was an easy read. We are going to dive into this document very deep with the many neighborhoods we work with. We are going to make sure that they understand their level of responsibility to contribute to reaching the goals of the plan. For everyone who contributed to the plan, this really was the best comment we could receive because it came directly from someone working every day to better their community. So now let's talk about what's in this comprehensive, easy to read plan. And I'll turn it over to Dr. Matthew Potzler, who was the lead coordinator, researcher, and primary writer of the plan. Matthew? Thank you, Roseanne. Thank you, Roseanne. Mayor and Council, I will be talking about what's in the Climate Action Plan, the Greenhouse Gas Emissions Reductions Goals, and goals that will increase the city's resiliency. The plan contains the following chapters. The vision are the 2050 Environmental Sustainability Goals approved by Council in 2016. There's an introduction on where Phoenix stands and its future regarding climate, equity, and environmental justice. The three greenhouse gas emissions reductions chapters of stationary energy, transportation, and waste as a resource. They are followed by the resiliency chapters, including financial sustainability initiatives, air quality, heat, local food system, and water. The greenhouse gas emissions and resiliency chapters have goals, and each of those goals has a target and baseline. To meet each goal, Actions were proposed by the city departments who will serve as a lead on the action alongside partners within the community with an estimated time frame for completion. The time frame ranges from short term by 2025 to long term by 2050. Each chapter begins with a title page like the one you can see for stationary energy, then the corresponding 2050 goal, a background on the chapter, innovation examples from the city, and key achievements. It is then followed by the goals and actions. Following are the main overarching goals of the Climate Action Plan. 
The greenhouse gas emissions reductions goals include a reduction of 50% by 2030 and net zero emissions by 2050 that were validated by C40 cities. These science-based targets were estimated with C40 Pathways model using Phoenix data. The model was used to identify actions that Phoenix could take on the resulting greenhouse gas emissions reductions. Net zero greenhouse gas emissions means that if greenhouse gases are emitted after 2050, then another source or technology will be used to capture it to remain neutral. These are the estimated reductions, and the following slides will talk about the goals to get there. The stationary energy sector is estimated to see a 70% reduction by 2030. Transportation reductions are estimated to be 28%, and waste sector reductions at 52%. The stationary energy sector has goals to build net zero greenhouse gas emissions buildings. These are energy efficient buildings that rely on renewable sources for energy. An example is the image on your screen of the Sonoran Studio. Another goal is to have 15 compact centers where services and goals will be provided locally in the different districts. The reductions will primarily rely upon use of renewable sources for energy. The goals for transportation are to have net zero transportation where the fleet is electrified or uses alternative fuels for 90% of residents to live within half a mile of transit, and for 40% of travel to include walking, biking, public transit, and ride sharing. Waste goals include promoting the circular economy, becoming a zero waste city through reducing waste, recycling and composting, and increased landfill gas capture. And next I will talk about resiliency goals. So resiliency goals are specific to Phoenix and of high concern to its residents. For example, 81% of the participants in the draft climate action plan survey are concerned about drought. The resiliency goals in the plan fall under air quality, heat, local food system, and water. Along with creating new programs to address air quality, other actions within the plan will reduce emissions of air pollutants to help meet national standards. These include projects like street improvement projects where air pollutants like dust will be reduced. Heat goals include reducing the urban heat island effect, meeting the 25% tree and shade canopy goal for residents to have access to parks and open space within a five minute walk, and for an increase in parks and, and paths and greenways. An example, is this, an example of this is cool pavement where roads are coated in a lighter colored material that have been shown to reduce temperatures locally. The local food system has goals to provide food for all and eliminate food deserts by encouraging innovative, sustainable, and, resiliency agri and resilient agricultural practices to grow food in our changing climate. And water goals include maintaining a clean and reliable 100-year water supply through projects like the Drought Pipeline Project. You can see images of Tres Rios, a project restoring a vital wetland and riparian habitat that is now home to more than 150 different animal species, including many birds, and that also helps treat wastewater. And now Deputy City Manager Peters. Thank you, Matthew. So in summary, the Phoenix Climate Action Plan was the result of an innovative, multi-phased approach to community involvement, completed entirely during a pandemic. The plan comprehensively documents the city's past and ongoing climate work, while also detailing a pathway for achieving carbon neutrality. The plan is a living document that engages the community to continue working with the city to achieve the goals. In fact, we will be right back out in the community in 2022 to share the latest emissions data and revisit the goals and actions, and are looking forward to the recommendations of the Mayor's Ad Hoc Committee on Electric Vehicles coming soon. And then finally, this plan implements the Mayor and Council's direction to lead the way on climate action. With that, staff recommends that the City Council approve the 2021 Climate Action Plan. We're happy to take any questions. Wonderful. Thank you so much. We really appreciate all the hard work on this. We do have many members of the public to address the council on this item. So we'll begin with that, beginning with our EQSC chairman, Colin Tetro, followed by Linda Brady. Can 
NGO sustainability expert. Pardon me. Good day, Madam Mayor, honorable members of the council, uh, Mr. Barton and staff. My name is Colin Tatro. I am a proud City of Phoenix District 6 resident, international enterprise public policy in NGO sustainability expert, Phoenix community nonprofit servant, and I have the honor of presently chairing the city's Environmental Quality and Sustainability Commission. For years, I have dedicated myself in service to provide counsel, support, and engineer solutions for the city in an honest broker and pragmatic perspective. I am present to speak wholly and declaratively in favor and support of the city's climate action plan. I hope each of you will join me. This document, which is intended to be dynamic and evolutionary in nature, sets the framework and plan on how Phoenix will create a community where people, our environment, and our economies will continue to thrive into the future. Indeed, good governance dictates that we think about the future in a sophisticated manner where we seek to create a shared value for all of our residents. The city's climate action plan lays the pathway for us to achieve that virtuous future for all. Now, I recognize that there are differences of opinion on how to achieve these necessary goals. And in that, I believe that rational and prudent discourse is healthy. However, without a firm grasp for our shared destination, any compass bearing or action we take will result in poor outcomes. The city has an opportunity and a responsibility to act and to act with a bias for impact and with alacrity in addressing our global and local climate crisis. This plan creates the vision and guidance, which will be continuously updated with best practice, scientifically grounded information to align ourselves with a future where our environment, people, and our economy can thrive in a shared manner. This work is buttressed not just by the work of staff in other peer cities, but is echoed in practice by the overwhelming predominance of the world's leading companies, global capital markets, government bodies, environmental leadership, and yes, economic development leadership. I encourage and request your affirmative vote for this proposed plan. Madam Mayor, Honorable Council Members, Mr. Barton and staff, thank you for the consideration of my input and my comments. That concludes them. Thank you. Thank you for your service. We'll have Linda followed by Ginger Torres. Good afternoon, Mayor Gallego, Phoenix City Council and staff. I'm here representing SRP today and want to thank you for providing another opportunity for us and others to review the climate action plan. We're pleased that the city incorporated some of our recommendations during the draft planning process. And also thank you for including specific dates, quantified outcomes and a clarified baseline across most major goal categories and supplementary goal actions. I also wanna compliment city staff on the amount of work you put into the plan and for your community outreach and engagement. We noticed that in the latest review of the plan, there are two te technical corrections needed in relation to SRP's sustainability goals. So we submitted those separately to staff and we hope that there will be an additional opportunity to review before finalization of the plan. Overall, SRP's excited to participate in the development of this climate action plan, our partnership with the city, and we look forward to assisting you with implementation of these ambitious goals. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Ginger will be next. Mayor and council members, city manager Barton and staff, I am lead of Valley Leadership's Impact Maker Environmental Sustainability Tree Cover and Shade Team. Impact Maker is an initiative of Valley Leadership that works to fuel long-term impact on Arizona's most pressing issues. Valley Leadership's Impact Maker Environmental Sustainability Team would like to express support for and urge city council to vote to approve Phoenix's 2021 Climate Action Plan. This plan presents an exciting opportunity for Phoenix to address environmental issues while increasing economic opportunities. As a desert city in the epicenter of the climate crisis, we need to implement the strong actions outlined in this plan to guide the way we tackle deadly heat, rising energy costs, poor air quality, and drought. Phoenix's 2021 Climate Action Plan will move us toward the Arizona we envision now and in the future. Again, we urge as Valley Leadership's environmental sustainability team we urge the council to vote in support of the 2021 climate action plan today. Thank you for your consideration of these comments and for your efforts on behalf of all Phoenicians and also Arizonans. 
Our next speaker is Jahir Abbas, followed by Don Amendin. Uh, Jahir, are you on the line? Oh, Jahir, are you on the line? Yes. Oh, uh, we can hear you and you may proceed. Hello? Hey. Hello, City Council member and Mayor Diaz of Phoenix. Uh, my name is Jawahar Abbas, and I am volunteering with uh, Central Arizona for the Sustainable Academy or CASE in Phoenix. I am here to support the 2021 Climate Action Plan. When I was volunteering on South Phoenix, there are no trees or shade, and uh, it is very hot. So I really like to go of the 100 go, uh, coal carriers by 2030, but this need to focus on area like South Phoenix and uh, family and uh, children should be protected when walking with to school or working with their pets and when, when they're walking to the past stop. And uh, the other point too, I have talked too many families about with the improving uh, our light layer. It is still very expensive for many people. We need to we need it to be improvement uh, fair and free before 2030. And uh, I brought my family here as a refugee from Sudan. And we have made Phoenix our home. My children deserve a city that is climate action leader. And please vote yes on the 2021 climate action plan today. And thank you. And uh, my pleasure to talk to you. Our next speaker is Don Ahmedin, followed by Sandy Barr. Don, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Um, good afternoon, City Council and esteemed members and, and Mayor Gallego. Uh, I've, um, my name is Don Abbott and I'm a, a nine year resident of Phoenix and I currently live in District 3. Uh, 45 years ago as a boy, I walked into the Museum of Natural History in New York and uh, saw a display about what would happen to coastal cities and so on if the polar ice caps had melted. And let me tell you, I was on the second floor of a pretty tall building and that would have been a hundred feet below the surface. Um, I believe um, we're now at, this was 45 years ago, we're now at, at zero hour to make the right uh, for my children's future, make this right for my children's future. I believe Phoenix is on the right track, but we need to step it up. Our children's future is dependent upon on us achieving zero greenhouse emissions, gas emissions as soon as possible. The wait until 2050 is 39 years. That is too late in my book. This needs to happen much sooner. We should offer incentives to make it more affordable for families to purchase electric vehicles, uh, which saves costs and fuel and the upkeep over, and upkeep over time. Please vote yes on the 2021 uh, Climate Action Plan today. Thank you for your time. Our next speaker is Sandy Barr, followed by Tammy Boss. Sam, Sandy, are you on the line? Can you hear me? Yes, we can, and you may proceed. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. My name is Sandy Barr. I'm the chapter director for Sierra Club's Grand Canyon chapter. I'm a 20 year plus resident of the city of Phoenix and a 30 plus year resident of Arizona. I reside in Council District 4. Sierra Club is supportive of the City of Phoenix moving forward with a strong climate action plan. Considering that our city is front and center in the climate crisis, we must act quickly and aggressively to both reduce our emissions and plan for what we are and will be experiencing 
especially relative to heat relief and mitigation, water resources, and air quality. As you have heard, resiliency is essential. Phoenix must expedite its path to achieve zero carbon emissions and ensure protection of those most vulnerable in our communities before 2050. And as part of that effort, the city needs to do more to push the utilities that serve our communities to also be carbon free much sooner than 2050. We would also like to see the city really prioritize transit friendly development. I know that's in the plan, make our community more accessible by means other than automobiles. In doing so, affordable housing must be a key component of that development. We also ask that you consider making transit more available economically uh, by moving forward with a free program for transit. We appreciate the city including goals to increase the number of bike lanes, but please consider ensuring that those are protected bike lanes. I personally ride my bike every morning and would love to ride it more, but find many of our streets downright frightening due to the amount and speed of vehicles on them. I was glad to hear the previous presentation, the Office of Heat Response and Mitigation, and agree that it must keep focused on uh, with an equity lens and appreciate the city increasing uh, cool corridors from 30 to 100. Uh, again, oh, it sounds like my time is up. So I will um, just wrap up really quickly and say uh, um, we'd like to see the city do more on energy efficiency relative to residents and uh, we'd like to breathe clean air in Phoenix in my lifetime. So I uh, hope you will continue to keep that as a prior priority. Please vote to approve the 2021 Climate Action Plan today. Thank you. Our next speaker is Tammy Boss, followed by Ryan Boyd. Tammy, are you on the line? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can, and you may proceed. Thank you, T Mayor, Council and wonderful staff as an individual business owner vice president of the arizona green chamber of commerce member of the environmental Delegation impact committee supporting the work of arizona thrives and a longtime volunteer for various environmental and community improvement initiatives i speak wholeheartedly in support of the adoption of the phoenix climate action plan thank you thank you thank you thank you again for your leadership on taking proactive action now to position Phoenix for a long-term livability and economic vitality by ensuring that Phoenix is a wonderful place to be now and in the future. This action is the epitome of fantastic work that the dedicated public service serve in, protect, in protecting our public. Climate action is both a public safety action as well as an action to ensure our long-term economic vitality. Vision starts the process, goals give it structure, resources give this viability to proceed. You have led the way for all three and the, and the citizens have joined in wholeheartedly in, in participating and developing this wonderful plan. Without a vital environment, we have no vital economy. This 2021 Climate Action Plan is a fantastic, absolutely fantastic step in the right direction to ensure that we have a wonderful place to live and work in Phoenix. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ryan Boyd, followed by Tamika Brown. Ryan, are you on the line? Good afternoon, yes. Um, Mayor, members of the council, uh, for the record, Ryan Boyd with the Urban Phoenix Project, uh, speaking in support of the Climate Action Plan today. Uh, and in particular, I want to give uh, some recognition to the, the Mayor, Councilman uh, uh, Warren, Councilwoman Ansari, and uh, Vice Mayor Garcia, who we've had extensive conversations with, and the staff for adding in the land use components into this next draft. We felt that that was a very important thing that was missing in the first draft, because if you really want to take these bold actions on climate and support the public transit that was so highly up there in the presentation at 76% of respondents and other items, you really need to have those compact uh, cores that are mentioned in the general plan, in the village plans, to allow people to walk, bike, ride a bus real quickly to their uh, jobs, to their stores, 
uh, to really create that environment and just cut down on the use of vehicles to bases that are creating these emissions and really driving up greenhouse gases. Um, beyond that, we want to just note here that uh, we would, in theory, if we had, had the, all the, the cards, would love to see the prioritization of the transportation items. The transportation goals for public transit, despite how popular they are, are still all long term, and we're really concerned about that. Um, as we look into the R momentum plan, as mentioned earlier today, those aren't really prioritizing creating uh, public transit that's frequent, that's free and reliable, so that individuals can use public transit to get around the city and to make their needs met. And that's one of our big things here is if we want to create a environmentally safe community, we need to be investing now in ways to make that walkable, bikeable and safe uh, with that again in support of it. And thank you for uh, your, your time today. Our next speaker is Tamika Brown, followed by Tim Brown. Tamika, are you on the line? Um, yes, I'm here. Yes, good afternoon. Hi, my name is Tamika Brown, and I live in Phoenix for over 11 years, and I'm a resident of District 5 and a worker at the Johnson House Convention Center. I'm going to urge City Council to vote in support of a strong climate action. As a resident who suffers from respiratory issues and relies on public transportation, I know that we need permanent fare-free transit sooner than 2030. In order to improve air quality for the residents like myself and make the city more accessible to people who choose not to own cars. As the population gets bigger, I believe that we need to make sure we grow in the right way by putting more money into green energy efficient technology that will make the city of Phoenix great, a great place to live for my children, seniors, and people with respiratory illnesses. We need to pass the 2021 Climate Action Plan now. Thank you for your time. Our next speaker is Tim Brown, followed by Hazel Chandler. Tim, are you on the line? I am on the line, and I'm sorry to ask the same redundant question. Can you hear me? Oh, uh, yes, we can, and you may proceed. Thank you very much. My name is Tim Brown. I've been a resident in the Valley since 1974. For over 47 years, I've watched the growth of our population, our traffic, the freeways, the concrete and pavements, the heat islands, and the increase in air pollution. Like other big cities, we must address the problems of our growth and sprawl, but in conjunction with the reality of our unique environment and climate change. My prioritized concerns environmentally are the sheer number of fossil fuel vehicles in Phoenix, polluting the air with exhaust and the disintegrating rubber tires, when you think about it, there's millions of them, and the particulates and the need for necessary air conditioning for people who cannot afford its cost, access to more frequent low or no cost transportation and the lack of water. I'm not sure you can do anything about that one. These items consume the most energy and ultimately impact our ability to live here. Our current energy comes from climate changing fossil fuels and the plan correctly addresses and includes the transition from fossil fuel based energy to non polluting alternative energy production. So first, I'd like to commend the city for producing such a thoughtful and inclusive approach addressing these environmental concerns as seen in the, in the Phoenix Climate Action Plan document. The goals are on target and address problems of growth, climate impact, and economic disparities. The goals further can be applied to all people in all neighborhoods and the fact that you are already implementing action plans puts the city in a class of forward thinking individuals and institutions facing the challenges of our environment. The plan states that implementation will require the city to work with partners across multiple sectors since the city lacks legal and institutional authority to completely implement all actions 
necessary on its own. I encourage the city to involve as many corporation sponsors as possible to provide that expertise freely, meaning pro bono, needed to remove roadblocks to the plan. If you Our next speaker is Hazel Chandler, followed by uh, Janine Devine, uh, Devine. Hazel, are you on the line? Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, and you may proceed. Yeah. Uh, I just want to uh, thank the city council and the mayor and all the staff at, at City of Phoenix. This is a really, really impressive plan. Um, I represent, um, and I work for our Union of Concerned Scientists as a consultant, and I'm on the national leadership team for Elders Climate Action. And both groups have um, have have read these plans and are very excited about this step forward for the city of Phoenix and want to commend the staff uh, on the hard, hard work that, that, that you did. Um, I've lived here in this valley um, for over uh, 40 years, been really active in climate action, um, actually for over 50 years. And this is the first hope that I think we can make some real progress in addressing uh, giving our children a livable future. The IPCC report said that we're in code red for humanity and our opportunity is closing quickly to do anything. Uh, that report was very clear that it, we needed to do mitigation and, and resiliency planning and this this plan has done an excellent job of that. Uh, we have not a minute to waste. Um, our, our children, our grandchildren, and I'm now a great great grandmother, or a great grand, great grandmother, not great great. But, um, and, you know, we have all of our future generations to think about, and this will be a step forward that will give them a livable future. Thank you so much. Pass this plan today because we do not have another minute to spare. Our next speaker is Jean Devine, followed by Omar Gonzalez. Jean, are you on the line? Jean is not on the line. Our next speaker is Omar Gonzalez, followed by Ken Gray. Omar, are you on the line? Hi there, can you hear me? Yes, we can, and you may proceed. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Omar Gonzalez and I'm calling on behalf of Nikola Corporation in support of Phoenix's 2021 climate action plan. This plan is critical for Phoenix to address the environmental and public health challenges confronting the city while creating jobs, reducing energy costs and becoming a leader in new technologies and industries. As you may know, Nikola is both a manufacturer of battery electric and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles and is engaged in the development of hydrogen production and refueling stations to support the adoption of ZEV heavy duty fleets and passenger vehicles, leading to the creation of a comprehensive zero emission transportation ecosystem. As a company headquartered proudly in Phoenix, we're excited to partner with the city and stakeholders to implement the plan and to work on future updates, especially as it relates to medium and heavy duty vehicles and the unique contribution that hydrogen solutions offer. Hydrogen and fuel cell technologies have significant potential to enable the transition to a clean, low carbon energy system and are best positioned to decarbonize the most difficult to decarbonize sectors. Completing this transition will result in greatly reduced greenhouse gas emissions and improved air quality. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Our next speaker is Ken Gray, followed by Charles Harrell. Ken, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Okay. My name is Ken Gray. I'm a resident. I've been resident of Phoenix since 1959. So I've seen all the freeways and all the buildings grow in this city. Um, I'm uh, really pleased with the uh, plan for climate action. And I'm particularly interested in the infrastructure for electric vehicles, working in conjunction with the state and federal government to implement stations valley-wide. Um, I'm really interested in the mitigation of the heat. Um, the, the road project that the ASU has been involved with sounds like a great, great idea. And I'm really anxious to see that put in place. Um, trees, shade, um, safe bike paths, uh, solar collectors and uh, community gardens are some of the areas of interest that I feel like we should really focus on. Um, 
Thank you for your time. And I am definitely in support of this climate action plan. Our next speaker is Charles Harrell, followed by Lynn Jaffe. Charles, are you on the line? Yes. Hi, my name is Charlize. I'm a volunteer with Central Arizonans for Sustainable Economy. I am 19 and I've lived in Arizona for 12 years of my life. I am urging the Phoenix City Council to please pass a strong climate action plan. As the temperatures become hotter every single year, we need to begin thinking of our houseless residents. We need to pass this climate action plan and create year-round relief stations that are going to save people's lives. Last year alone, public officials announced that 494 deaths in the valley were related to our record-breaking temperatures. We need to adequately serve our residents who do not have access to luxuries like air conditioning or shade by passing the 2021 Climate Action Plan. If we do not do this now, then when will we? We need to pass this now. Thank you. Our next speaker is Lynn Jaffe, followed by Adam Johnson. Lynn, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Oh, uh, we can hear you, but there is a slight uh, echo. I know. I just picked up the phone. Well, there is an echo. I don't know what the it is. Um, oh, it's good now. Yes, because I'm not. Oh, good. <laughs> I'll just go for it. <laughs> um, first, I want to say that I'm so so pleased about the establishment of the Office of Heat Response and Mitigation. Oh my heavens, can you understand this? Oh, um, maybe yes, I should just can. call in again. Wait, the echoes for me is gone. All right, good. Oh, uh, please continue. Um, anyway, I hope that uh, the office is aggressive and wildly successful. As for the Climate Action Plan, it's really a fantastic plan. It's both comprehensive and detailed. And uh, in terms of voting for it, consider that the citizens of Phoenix voted for its development six years ago. It's time to put it into action. I'm a citizen of Tucson. And for me, this plan is a model for other cities to follow, but only if they see it work. It does no good as a paper document. It has to be implemented fast and aggressively. As a member of the C40 Cities Climate Leadership Group, Phoenix committed to a substantial reduction in carbon emissions by 2030. Regional discussions that you've been doing and the partnerships that Phoenix has initiated will give others incentive to institute similar plans, but only if they see the results of yours. The discussion has to end somewhere. and aggressive action implemented or none of this is going to happen. So as a resident of Tucson, I want to be able to say to our city council, Phoenix did it. The hard part of the drafting is already done. We need to follow their lead. So please vote on this plan and pass it now. Our next speaker is Autumn Johnson followed by Revco Knox. Autumn, are you on the line? Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, we can, and you may proceed. My name is Autumn Johnson with Tierra Strategy, Public Interest Policy Advocacy. Thank you for the opportunity to provide public comments on the city's climate action plan. I provide these comments as a member of the city's EV ad hoc committee and after providing written comments on the draft plan in July. I would like to congratulate the city for joining C40 for soliciting stakeholder feedback before finalizing the plan and for the comprehensiveness of the plan. I have reviewed many of the climate action plans completed or in the works within the state and Phoenix's is notable. Most importantly, I'm very pleased with the city solicited and then incorporated feedback before finalizing the plan. The updates of 50% of new car sales as electric by 2030 and a 50% reduction in community-wide carbon emissions by 2030 are especially important. Because carbon accumulates, interim goals are especially consequential to stay on target to limit warming to 1.5 degrees. To quote from page 19 of the report, the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change Special Report on Global Warming stated that global GHG emissions must be reduced by 40 to 75 percent by 2030 to be on track toward the Paris Agreement goal of keeping warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. 
And C40's deadline 2020 research indicates that cities like Phoenix should reduce emissions by about 67% by 2030 to support that goal, um, that global goal as equitably as possible. I sincerely hope that the city intends the climate action plan to be a living document, which will be updated with more aggressive goals as science and technological innovation dictate. I would also encourage the city to set a date by which its entire fleet is zero emission and to move forward expeditiously with electrifying its buses and adopting EV ready building codes. I wholeheartedly encourage you to pass this plan and allocate the necessary resources to make it a reality. Thank you again for the opportunity to make comments. Our next speaker is Revco Knox, followed by Katie Lavra. Revco, are you on the line? I hope so. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, and you may proceed. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Rufko Knox. I have lived in the city of Phoenix since 1966. I live in Council District 1, and uh, I am very uh, excited and honored to be able to speak to the mayor and council and the wonderful staff that prepared this plan, in which I am very, very strongly in favor of, uh, although I hope that you... Um, the goals are met before the date. I would love to see that happen. Um, I think that um, it is very important for this plan to be uh, adopted speedily, implemented speedily, um, and uh, that the equity lens of it continue to be a very powerful focus and there be continued ways for the public to continue to provide input as the plan is implemented. No plan, regardless of how great it is, is perfect, and you need to get constant feedback. I did make a point of calling every member of the city council, except one, to let them know that I was very in strongly in support of this plan, and I am. I was extremely impressed by hearing all the details. I read about the plan, talked to people about it, but listening to the details was wonderful. Um, I have mentioned to people that I see this not only as an environmental issue, because of course it is, but it's also a form of economic development because other communities, uh, businesses will see how forward looking the city of Phoenix is. They will want to expand here. They will find it economically viable. Uh, and finally, I'm gonna make the point that in a way, uh, the, one of the callers just before me made about the fact that uh, Phoenix can be a role model for communities all over the state of Arizona, which also need to do their share and adopt their plans. So uh, thank you very, very much to everybody. And I look forward to seeing the plan implemented and a lot of feedback and, and, uh, and uh, communication with the rest of the community as it's implemented. Thank you and have a very good day. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Our next speaker is Katie Lavra, followed by Mary Lauren. Katie, are you on the line? Oh, I am on the line. Can you hear me okay? Oh, yes, we can, and you may proceed. Okay. Thank you, Madam Mayor and members of the City Council members. My name is Katie Lavra, and I'm a resident of District 4 in Phoenix. I have lived in the city for over 60 years, and I'm calling today in support of the 2021 Climate Action Plan. I'm excited to hear about Phoenix increasing the number of bike lanes, but right now though, I am scared to ride my bike in the street and even more so to have my, children, my grandchildren out riding their bikes with me. A close friend of mine was sent to the hospital and had to have a total knee replacement after being hit by a car when using an unprotected bike lane. Each new bike lane should be protected to stop this from happening to others in the future. And in order to make sure more people walk and ride bikes, we need to install heat relief and water stations distribution centers. The heat is not going away and we need to respect it and be prepared for it. I want to see CC Phoenix reach zero greenhouse gas emissions before I'm gone. 2050 might be too late. Please vote yes on the 2021 climate action plan today. And thank you for your time. Our next speaker is Mary Long, followed by Kendra Lee. Mary, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Uh, we can hear you, and you may um, proceed. Yes, 
thank you for allowing me to speak today uh, to the council and to the mayor. I appreciate it that you're taking input from the community. Um, I, I am in that 59% that you spoke of earlier who think about climate change every day. Um, I'm, I'm just kind of bombarded by emails and I come at it from a three different kind of perspectives. First of all, the perspective of having uh, an insurance career and um, second, through my faith community. And third, just being a, a conservative person that's not wasteful by nature. And my, my consumption tends to be driven by my needs versus my wants. I support what you're doing and fully support it. And I am so proud of the city that for coming up with this report um, and just want to appreciate the fact that there's obviously, if you see on page four, a lot of collaboration going on a bit among so many city employees in so many different departments among the state and among the community. Um, so this is to be applauded that there's so many stakeholders here that have been involved in this. Um, Part of the report, it talks, the September 2021 report uh, talks about saying it's a path to achieving the goals. And I find that especially important that we have paths with clearly defined goals in attacking climate. Um, and I appreciate that there are 2030 goals, not just 2050 goals. There's a lot of groups out there, industries uh, that are kind of greenwashing and talking about what they're going to do by 2050. Well, I don't know who's going to hold them accountable and which of us are going to still be around in 2050 to hold them accountable. But I appreciate that the goals are closer in time. I'll close by just saying uh, the cost of doing nothing are too great. Um, and I, I do appreciate that you'll put this all together. Keep up the good work and let's take it a step further and go with it. Thank you. Our next speaker is Kendra Lee, followed by Maricela Marias. Kendra, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor Gallego, Honorable Council Members, and Deputy City Manager Peters for the opportunity to express our support of the City of Phoenix's Climate Action Plan. My name is Kendra Lee. I'm Government Affairs Manager for APS, and I'm proud to have worked with the City of Phoenix for more than 20 years on efforts much like this, but more, even more proud of e APS's uh, commitment to serve City of Phoenix and its customers for, and our customers for more than 130 years. On behalf of our APS CEO, Jeff Gullner, and the entire APS team, we applaud the city's leadership, and we are grateful for the opportunity to work with you on many components of this climate action plan, including the conversion of the 100, over 100,000 streetlights to LED, along with significant reduction in energy usage at many city buildings. We have a long history of working with the city on multiple solar projects, plus a new microgrid installation underway at the 23rd Avenue wastewater treatment plant. There's no question that our own clean energy commitment complements your climate action plan as well. By 2050, APS will provide 100% clean, carbon-free electricity to our customers. We'll do that by, re by retiring our coal-fired generation by 2031, increasing solar and renewable energy projects, and building better battery energy storage projects too. Continuing to focus on economic growth and energy efficiency is most important. By working together, we will both achieve our goals for a better tomorrow and a sustainable Arizona. Thank you for your time today. Our next speaker is Maricela Marias, followed by Michael Martinez. Maricela, are you on the line? Maricela is not on the line. Our next speaker is Michael Martinez, followed by Eric Nieto. Michael, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Uh, can y'all hear me? Yes, we can, and you may proceed. Awesome. Um, so um, I live in Encanto, and uh, Laura Pastor is my city council representative. Um, since moving to Phoenix seven and a half years ago, I've always owned a gas-operated commuter vehicle. Um, but as a responsible citizen who believes climate change is a looming threat to our planet, I make conscious choices to minimize my carbon footprint. Uh, one way that I do this is by using my bicycle to get around town whenever that's a viable option. 
Um, I understand that this travel option carries certain risks, like being struck by moving vehicles. Um, for this reason, it makes sense to increase the number of bike lanes here in Phoenix. Um, I'm really excited about the prospects of Phoenix being a recognized global leader for climate change mitigation strategies, and um, look forward to implementing the 2021 Climate Action Plan. Uh, thank you for your time. Our next speaker is Eric Nieto, followed by Michael Oliveras. Eric, are you on the line? Eric is not on the line. Our next speaker is Michael Oliveras, followed by Irma Pachenko. Michael, are you on the line? Uh, yes, I am. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can, and you may proceed. Thank you. Uh, so good afternoon. My name is Michael Ivadas. I'm an organizer with Central Arizonans for a Sustainable Economy and also a resident of District 8. Uh, I'm calling to urge the City Council to please vote in support of a strong uh, climate action. In the five years that I've lived here, I've seen and felt how bad the weather has gotten from uh, extreme rainfall and flooded freeways to the most consecutive triple-digit days on record. Uh, and I truly believe that it's up to our elected leaders like yourself to begin figuring out solutions to these immediate problems. Um, you know, I think we need to begin implementing more carbon capture technology. I think we need more energy efficient buildings. We need um, parking structures that make use of how much sunlight we get in this in this city and this state. I mean, it's it's like they say, if life gives you lemons, uh, make lemonade. And we have a lot of sun, so why don't we use more of that to begin figuring out solutions to um, homeless people who are dying of heat exhaustion from elderly citizens who, if their AC goes out, you know, we had an incident where, where several senior citizens, I believe, died over the last summer's heat wave. You know, these things aren't okay. We pay taxes for a reason. And if we're going to pay taxes, then we need to use that money to solve problems. That's what this money needs to be used for, is to figure out solutions to existing problems, not to uh, pass other ordinances or give rent relief to other things that don't really matter. It's like these are immediate problems that um, I think you all need to um, clearly address. And, and, to, and to be honest with you all, uh, if we don't do this now, then when are we? And, you know, I mean, it really is up to you guys. And this is a great way for Arizona to be an example, um, not just for other communities in our state, but to also other states in the nation. After all, we are the third largest uh, or the third biggest economy in the nation and also one of the fastest growing states. So, you know, if we're going to, if we're going to get bigger, we need to uh, get bigger in the correct way. Um, so I urge you all to please pass this uh, proposal. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Irma Pachenko, followed by Karen Potter. Uh, Potter. Irma, are you on the line? Uh -huh. Sí, buenas tardes. ¿Sí me escuchan? Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Irma Pacheco y llevo aquí más de 30 años viviendo en la ciudad de Phoenix, Hello, en el Distrito 7. Uh, permítame un momentito, señora Pacheco. ¿Me no? puede escuchar? Muy bien, yo sí. le voy a estar interpretando. Mi nombre es Elsie y nada más le voy a pedir uh -huh. que um, haga una breve pausa después de cada oración para interpretar lo Come mejor on. posible. Está bien. Gracias. Um, I have been living in the valley for the last 30 years. Adelante. Uh, soy, soy residente del Distrito 7. And I'm a, a resident of District 7. Y estoy urgiendo al City Council que por favor voten sí para el 2021 Climate Action Plan. And I am urging the council to vote yes on the 2020 Action Plan. Porque desde que vivo aquí en la ciudad de Phoenix, yo veo con tristeza que cada año el aire está más contaminado y más contaminado. Because year after year, I notice that the air is increasingly polluted. Con mucha tristeza veo que nuestra ciudad se ve envuelta en una nube oscura de pollution, y eso me preocupa mucho. And sadly, I see how our city is covered by this dark cloud from pollution. Porque eso afecta a, a la salud de todos los que vivimos en la ciudad, a todos en general. Because that affects the health of everyone, everyone in jail, in general, that lives in the city. 
Yo vengo de la Ciudad de México y yo tuve la experiencia And de ver I, I, morir a la... Ajá. I, sí, I'm from the city of Mexico and I saw a lot of people how they passed away. No, yo vi a las aves, oiga, yo, yo tuve la experiencia de mirar a las aves caer de los árboles hacia el piso contaminadas por la pollution y yo no quisiera que eso pasara aquí. Correction. What I saw were the birds that would fall down from the sky, which were affected by the pollution, and I don't want that to happen here. Y también estoy preocupada por el agua porque la pollution también contamina el agua. And I'm also worried about our water no because the pollution aquí. also affects our water. Es por eso que esto, les doy muchas gracias por la oportunidad que me están dando de expresarme y les pido, por favor, que pasen el plan 2021 Climate Action Plan. And I want to thank you for the opportunity to express myself and I want to urge you to pass to vote for the 2021 Action Plan, Climate Action Plan. Por favor, antes de que sea demasiado tarde, porque no queremos llegar al 2050 y que ya sea demasiado tarde. And please, um, we don't want it to, to take our time and then it be too late. We don't want the year 2020, the 2050 year to come and then us be in a bigger problem. Uh -huh. eh, por último, necesitamos, por favor, para nuestros hijos, para nuestras familias, para nuestros abuelos, una ciudad limpia con un aire claro y limpio. Por favor. And, and lastly, we need a city for our children, elderly, and everyone to be in an environment where they can be healthy and thrive. Eh, muchas gracias por la oportunidad de haberme expresado. Gracias. Thank you Hasta again luego. for the opportunity to express. Our next speaker is Karen Powder, followed by Alexander Ross. Uh, Karen, are you on the line? Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, and you may proceed. Great. Thank you. And good afternoon, Mayor Gallego, council members, and City of Phoenix staff. My name is Karen Potter, and I'm the Utility Program Manager for the Southwest Energy Efficiency Project, otherwise known as SWEEP. SWEEP is a regional public interest organization focused on eliminating waste from power generation and transportation systems in order to save all Arizonans money. I have also been given permission to speak on behalf of Diane Brown of the Arizona Perg Education Fund. Both SWEEP and the Arizona Perg Education Fund commend the city's climate action plan and the planning process and urge adoption of the draft before you today. As one of the stakeholders uh, uh, that staff mentioned earlier in its presentation, uh, we support staff update to the climate action plan, including the, pardon me, including the adoption of an interim greenhouse gas emissions goal of 50% economy-wide by 2030, in response to that stakeholder engagement and uh, increasing participation from the public. We fully support the plan's approval today and also have two recommendations for future planning cycles and implementation. First, we recommend that future plans include a specific energy savings target so that the city can take advantage of cost-effective energy efficiency and weatherization. This is particularly important for helping low-income residents save money while staying connected to life-saving electricity. We also recommend a special emphasis on the electrification of appliances, such as electric heat pumps and heat pump water heat heaters, as several studies show that building electrification can save energy and greenhouse gas emissions in both new and existing homes in the city of Phoenix. In conclusion, we urge the City Council to approve the Climate Action Plan before you today so that the City of Phoenix and its residents can benefit from a robust local economy, clean air, and healthy homes. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Our next speaker is Alexander Ross, followed by Richard Sigler. Alexander, are you on the line? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can, and you may proceed. Awesome. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. My name is Alex Ross. I'm the Arizona Program Manager for Defend Our Future, a project of the Environmental Defense Fund, as well as a resident of uh, Council District 4. 
Um, I'm speaking today in support of the 2021 Climate Action Plan. Um, every day I get the opportunity to work with students and young people who unfortunately are struggling to remain optimistic in the face of climate catastrophe. We are desperately seeking leadership at every level of government to dedicate the time and resources to transitioning our economy away from fossil fuels. This Climate Action Plan gives us a framework to track our progress as we meet the challenges of the next few decades. From expansion of public transit to addressing heat inequities, these goals put us on track to keep our beautiful city habitable. The cost of inaction is simply too great to delay any further. As many have already mentioned before, um, in order to address the environmental inequities that are all across our city, we're going to need clear and consistent communication between the city and the what the Climate Action Plan details as overburdened communities. Um, so I would just urge the council um, and our mayor as you continue to adopt and implement this plan to just keep people at the center of your deliberations because there are quite literally lives on the line. Thank you. Our next speaker is Richard Sigler, followed by Joanna Strother. Richard, are you on the line? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can, and you may proceed. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Richard Sigler. I'm a Phoenix resident in, in District A, and I strongly support the Phoenix Climate Action Plan. I am hoping that you pass it. Uh, other than being concerned about our fragile democracy, I'm very concerned about the climate emergency that we're in right now. And not only for myself, but for future generations and for the planet. I'm very happy that Phoenix is in the C40 cities uh, and that we've gotten into that uh, uh, cities plan. And I hope, and the thing that I am very interested in seeing happen in the city is that uh, we put in electric vehicle charging stations because I believe that people won't buy electric cars unless they have a place to charge them up. And then I think it would very strongly uh, improve the, uh, I think people would turn to electric vehicles more. And uh, I think it would just rebound and the more people that would buy them, the cheaper they would get and the better quality they would be. So thank you for hearing me today. Goodbye. Our next speaker is Joanna Strother, followed by Josh Wells. Joanna, are you on the line? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can, and you may proceed. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor and City Council members. My name is Joanna Strother, and I serve as the Senior Advocacy Director for the American Lung Association. As a health organization, we strongly support implementation of the Phoenix Climate Action Plan to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and to mitigate the harmful health impacts of climate change. Phoenix has some of the worst air quality across the US. The American Lung Association 2021 State of the Air Report ranked Phoenix as the fifth most polluted for ozone, 13th in unhealthy particle pollution days, and eighth for the most annual particle pollution levels. These dangerous levels of air and climate pollution exacerbate respiratory health and heart conditions. Further, marginalized communities, including people of color and low-income families, face greater risk from harmful effects of air pollution. Vehicle emissions are the largest source of our air pollution burden, so we urge the council to accelerate adoption of electric vehicles to secure the state benefits of a zero emission transportation sector. In December 2020, the American Lung Association released polling data of Arizona voters, which showed widespread support for non-combustion transportation and renewable energy choices. This plan is an important step forward in achieving air and sustainable future, clean air. We are grateful for the opportunity to make comment and encourage the council to advance transportation, electrification, and renewable energy to protect the health of all Arizonans. Thank you. Our next speaker is Josh Wells. Josh, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council members. My name is Josh Wells. I am a policy researcher for Central Arizona for a Sustainable Economy, also known as CASE, and a resident of District 4. I would like to re-emphasize our organization's strong support 
for Phoenix's 2021 Climate Action Plan. Phoenix has been a world leader in climate action through aspects such as the installation of cool pavement. This plan allows us to continue being an environmental leader while also increasing jobs and reducing energy costs. We strongly support a focus on transit-first development. The plan should have a goal of free public transit well before 2030 to increase usage and relieve one of the major financial burdens for low-income residents. It is great to see the city push for more ambitious goals, including moving the goal of 30 cool corridors by 2030 up to 100 cool corridors. Communities that are often left behind, like those in West and South Phoenix, should be the focus of these efforts, as many residents lack sufficient shade when walking long distances to work, school, and bus stops. On a personal note, the lack of charging infrastructure is one of the most detrimental impediments to residents shifting to electric vehicles. I made the personal decision to get an electric car so I could do my part in saving my children's future. Not realizing how outdated our infrastructure is, I ended up blowing out half of my house's power when I plugged in my car. It ultimately cost me more than $4,000 to get my house set up with a proper charging system, a cost I was only able to afford with the help from family. And that stops many residents from making the shift to electric vehicles. Many car companies plan to end production of gas-powered vehicles by 2030. If we don't offer programs for homes and apartments to get chargers installed more affordably, many Phoenix residents will be left behind. Phoenix needs to achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions before I become a grandfather. My children are three and five years old, so the clock is ticking. We ask that you vote today to approve the 2021 Climate Action Plan. Thank you for your time. Mayor, that was our final speaker on this item. Thank you. Thank you to all the members of our community who participated in today's public testimony. We have now heard from people from the business community, faith community, nonprofit community, students, and older residents. So we appreciate that. I was reflecting on when we did our first plan and the uh, amount of stakeholder engagement was nowhere near this. So it's exciting that people believe it is worth their time to participate in this. The plan is a crucial roadmap for our community and making sure we invest in sustainability and future generations. So thank you to everyone who's participated. I particularly want to thank Nancy and the Office of Environmental Programs for shepherding this through and creating a solid plan and a robust process. It's really been a, a citywide approach, and I want to thank everyone who supported Nancy in that, as well as the Environmental Quality and Sustainability Commission, led by Colin and Ginger, who helped us make sure that we had a plan made by and for the community. It is unique among cities that we have this science-based approach to our plan that was developed in-house. We got accolades from C40, which has helped us do some of the um, modeling efforts, and they were so impressed that we were able to do this in health in house with our talented team. Not every city has a PhD in chemical engineering who also happens to speak Spanish. So thank you, Dr. Potzler, for your help, as well as everyone, Roseanne, and others who were out there working on this. The climate action is important for our city and for remaining economically competitive. Uh, we appreciate all the businesses that provided input in this as well. By committing to these um, steps forward, we will save money in the long run. I look forward to a continual dialogue on this plan with our residents, community organizations, businesses, schools, and others. It's very much a living document, and we will track and report progress on a regular two-year basis. I'm proud that in implementing the actions in this plan, Phoenix will play a lead role in delivering the climate solutions our country and our world needs for a healthy and sustainable future. And now I will turn to Councilwoman Ansari, who is very active and passionate about these issues. Thank you so much, Mayor. I also want to echo uh, the huge thanks to Karen Peters, Nancy Allen, Mark Hartman, and your teams for the incredible work you've put into this. You made the time to not only host all of those community workshops, but you met with my team numerous times and we're very appreciative um, that you answered all of our questions and we're open to feedback. The plan that we see today is much stronger than the initial draft that was presented in June. This office my, or this summer, uh, my office joined city staff to host two public workshops around the plan. We also had over 20 meetings with community groups and stakeholders and tabled at libraries and events 
throughout District 7 to collect input on the plan. I specifically want to name some of the goals and aspects that were made stronger. Coming out of the summer's community meetings, it was clear that the plan needed to take a much sharper consideration of equity throughout. I'm pleased to see that the equity and environmental justice section was moved to the outset of the plan and that nearly every section of the plan now has an equity goal. Thank you as well for taking our suggestion and increasing the cool corridors goal, which we obviously talked about in the last item from 30 miles by 2030 to 100 miles by 2030. We know that we really need to take an aggressive and proactive approach to heat relief and mitigation, and this will help get us there. I'm also thrilled that we've aligned with the federal government on the goal of 50% of car sales being electric by 2030, and that we have a goal now to install 500 charging stations on um, city owned and managed properties by 2030. With so many car manufacturers um, now committing to phase out gas powered vehicles, Phoenix needs to make investments like this right now to ensure that we're prepared for an all electric future. So the climate action plan is extremely strong. Um, I'm very glad that this will be a living document. And as one member of the public said, it will be dynamic and evolutionary. A few things that I hope we will consider in future iterations. First, I think we heard strongly from the public today, and as we saw in the survey results around air quality, around transit, around EV infrastructure, I hope that we will pursue a free public transit system. I'm dedicated to working with other council offices, city staff to look at the pilot programs that we already have in place, see how they affect ridership, look at the data. Um, I think we'll find that this is doable, um, but we know that no major US city has done this, so it's an opportunity for Phoenix to be a leader. Second, I agree that goals around bike lanes um, should specify that these will be protected bike lanes. We've lost far too many community members. We just, um, you know, because of lack of protective infrastructure, and I think that our residents will be far more likely to utilize uh, bikes if they feel safe doing so. And finally, I'm very glad uh, that the roadmap that we're working on through the electric vehicle ad hoc committee is featured as a goal. It would be great to see us eventually really put you know, funds and staff behind transportation electrification, the way we have funded the Office of Heat Response and Mitigation, again, to address air quality and to address the concerns of the public. But thank you again so much for all your work on this. Thank you to everyone who called in. The real hard work of implementation of this plan begins now, but really this is a huge, huge deal for Phoenix and for our country, and I'm very excited. So. Um, I would like to make a motion uh, to approve item two and adopt Phoenix's climate action plan per staff recommendation. Second. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor, and, and thank you, Councilwoman. I'm sorry. It's, it's great to have your expertise uh, on this topic, and, and thank you for letting us join some of those public hearings that you hosted. Um, there's a couple of things I wanted to uplift and then some things I wanted to flag. Um, <clears throat> like Councilman Ansari said, the, the equity piece is really important to us. Um, the equity and the environmental justice section of this that this plan lays out is a really solid framework. And I love that it's explicit in its focus on overburdened, overburdened communities. Um, I think this is a great start when it comes to taking equity from a conversation to intentional and direct action. Again, the implementation is going to be key. Um, <clears throat> also, really appreciate the elements of this plan that speak to the huge need for resilient food networks, and acknowledge the long-standing issues of food deserts um, concentrated in certain parts of our city, especially in District Eight. Our office is currently working uh, with a group of farmers from South Phoenix, and looking forward to see how this plan and the city can continue to support local growers. And we also have. A huge project coming to to the city uh, by the name of Arizona Fresh that I think will be uh, supporting in, in this issue. Um, it's also great that the plan acknowledges the role of transportation. We heard a lot of the callers mention this and infrastructure um, and how and the role that they play in climate change, uh, ensuring that all communities have access to transportation um, that is climate resilient is really important. We are obviously a car dependent city. And getting away from that is critical through more walkability and increased public transit. Um, but we need to remember that it's not just enough 
to give more options if not everyone can actually access those options. Um, things like maybe making public transit free uh, definitely address this and, and I hope to see the, the plan um, seek to talk more about this or speak to this more in the future. Um, but some of the things I wanted to flag, um, the tree forcer program to help residents plant trees only addresses you know language barriers but not cost barriers. Um, this is why the equity section for this plan is so important and only impactful if it's interwoven into every aspect and, and every step. Um, so figuring out how we, you know, intersect other other city departments or support for folks and obviously looking at cost barriers. Um, the timeline for most of these goals um, do not meet the urgency of the moment. We heard that from a lot of the speakers that 2050 is too late. I agree with a lot of the folks that called in and said that. Um, we must act within the next 10 years on, on these clean energy goals. And, and even that, that might not be soon enough. So um, again, I think from the callers we heard, and I want to express that as well, that we, we create a little bit more urgency into the plan. Um, this plan is super important, especially for many of the constituents I represent the impacts of climate change will hit communities of color and working people the hardest. And these are the very communities that are often left behind. We must be willing to make the large investments this plan requires and prioritize money to make this plan a, a reality in this upcoming budget cycle and in every cycle after that. And I really want to point to that. Um, I know we, we make amazing plans. Staff worked really hard. Community gave amazing input. This is a lot mo community comments are always insightful, but today specifically, I think is is one of those comments sessions that we want to record, put in our back pocket to make sure that we address a lot of the things that were said today. And with more important than anything, put money to this plan. And so thank you again to all the staff, all the callers, all the folks who worked on this, to my colleagues and, and all of us moving forward. I really hope that we um, take this urgent matter forward and, and, and kind of put our money where our mouth is. So thank you so much. Thank you, Councilwoman Gordado. Thank you, Mayor. Just have a few comments. First off, I want to thank everyone at the Office of Environmental Programs for their work on this plan. They have met with our office numerous times and have been very responsive in the input they have received from the Council. Nancy Allen took the time to show our office how to track data that has helped in my ability to better understand environmental justice and equity. Next, I do want to ensure that the updates and revisions to the Climate Action Plan will continue to be provided to our residents in both English and Spanish. This will help ensure access to the information and improve the ability of the community to comment. I, I would also like to see emphasis put on put on adjusting our building codes to ensure they are solar ready for residential construction. I know this is something that cities like Tucson, Austin, and Houston have already done. And I think Phoenix sh should be a leader in ensuring all our residents can easily access solar. I want to also thank Councilwoman Ansari and her staff for working with staff on improvements to this plan most especially their request to increase the, pro the proposed school corridors from 30 to 100 throughout the city. It is vital that we bring tree and shade improvements to our residents so they are able to comfortably walk their neighborhoods and connect to parks and areas of recreation. I am e eager to bring these school corridors to West Phoenix and know they will benefit our working families. So thank you D7 for all of your hard work. I know it, I know it takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of time, it's very time consuming. So thank you, thank you so much um, to all the work that you guys did on this plan. Finally, I would like to see this plan speak more towards how our city can assist residents whose home cooling or AC units break down, which we know greatly increases the likelihood of heat and related deaths. I would also like to see this plan identify the areas of our city that suffer from poor air quality. This will help us know where best to focus resources and ensure we can best combat the impacts to our children 
and vulnerable population as we see growing numbers of asthma and respiratory impacts. Again, I want to thank the staff, members that worked on this plan. I am grateful to see Phoenix take a leadership role in addressing the challenges to our climate and also thank all the callers that called in today and, and gave us their input um, so we can continue to move forward. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilwoman. Any additional Councilwoman Stark? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I too want to thank staff. I, I think they did a tremendous, tremendous job. The work they did on this, the outreach was so vital. I heard from many of my constituents and they're very excited about the plan. And I know, Mayor, when you were first a councilwoman, you led the charge to get us here. So I want to thank you as well. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you. Any additional comments? Mayor? Go ahead. This is Councilwoman Pastor. I wanted to know after listening to all the comments and, and uh, pieces, I wanted to know if the maker of the motion can move the from 2050 to 2040. And uh, Councilwoman Pastor, I just would remind you, we committed to a, li a living document, but we have had a, a robust number of stakeholder meetings about this particular plan. And that, but I was just, uh, my, well, my question is, we're hearing an urgency. And so is there the possibility to move it from 2050 to 2040 or 2045, you know, just so that we can hear the urgency? Mayor, uh, Councilwoman Pastor, this is Karen. Um, I, I really appreciate the, the urgency and, and agree with many of the callers that, uh, that action is needed as soon as we can physically get it done. Um, the plan as it stands is based on modeling that shows us when the actions that are proposed will result in the outcomes we've talked about. So we're very willing to entertain moving it up, but that would require a significant amount of modeling work that uh, will take more time than I'd say we, we have if, if we wanna get this thing going here before the end of the year. Oh, no, I would want to, I would want to get it going at by the end of the year. I'm just asking if, if it could be moved up and uh, put the resources that are needed behind it. But what I'm hearing is that it can't. And so I'm just asking for the community. Wonderful. Thank you and appreciate your commitment to fighting climate change, a key issue for our city. All right, well, then we will move to roll call on Councilwoman Ansari's motion. Ansari. Yes. Desicio. Guardado. Yes. O'Brien. Mayor, may, may I explain my vote? Please do. Thank you so much. First, I want to thank Karen Peters and her staff for all of their hard work on the Climate Action Plan. I don't disagree with many of the measures and goals discussed in Phoenix Climate Action Plan. As a Phoenix native, I've grown up in this heat and experienced our summers becoming hotter and longer. Providing more shade and working on efforts to lower our heat footprint will help to minimize these heat waves for generations to come. Having said that, I'm concerned about the costs associated with the plan and ideas being proposed in it. It's nice to say we should do it, but the question is how will we pay for it? Today, we'll be voting no on this, not because I disagree with these efforts, but because I'm concerned about the costs associated with these measures. Staff did a great job of getting and incorporating community input. However, citizens were not provided costs or choices that would require them to sacrifice another service to implement any of these goals. It is imperative we ensure any measures are sustainable while still providing city services. Having said that, when one of these programs comes forward for a vote at the council, I will consider each one on its own merit and cost. With that, I vote no. Pastor. I apologize, Pastor. Yes, yes. Thank you. Stark. Yes. Waring. No. Garcia. 
Yes. Gallego. Yes. Passes 6-2. Thank you so much. The City Council has updated our climate action plan moving towards net zero by 2050. Thank you all for joining us today. We are adjourned. and visitors to city buildings. As a reminder, masks are required at all airports and public transit. This is part of the federal mask mandate. For vaccination information, visit this website. A partir del lunes 2 de agosto de 2021, se requerirán cubiertas faciales en todos los edificios municipales de Phoenix, sin importar su estado de vacunación. Esto en respuesta a las nuevas pautas de la CDC por las altas tasas de transmisión de COVID en nuestra comunidad. El mandato aplica a todos los empleados y visitantes en edificios municipales. Recuerde, se requieren máscaras en todos los aeropuertos y transporte público, como parte del mandato federal de máscaras. Para información sobre vacunas, visite esta página. October is paint.